Well, good morning. I'm Master Sergeant Andrew Bisco here out on the historic flight line of Westover. And today we're, wis we're witnessing history on this historic flight line. One of only two remaining A models that was, the, was in the original inventory back in 1987 here. Serial number 690020, which, according to the crew chiefs that we spoke with, does not have a nickname. But 020 is getting ready to leave here today for its long and final flight to the Boneyard at Davis Montana Air Force Base, Arizona. It will join thousands of airplanes there for good as it lands. Its final landing in the desert of Tucson, Arizona. This morning we're witnessing a historic moment also because it is the oldest C-5 left in the entire Air Force inventory. 48 years old. And according to our maintenance friends, it, acc it has accrued 21,775 flight hours. That's a lot of time in service to our country. Thousands of landings, including 5,454 full stop landings. That's a lot of wear and tear on an old bird as we see these A models go away with their trademark sound that we've heard that people around Westover have heard for 30 years it will be going away but what will be coming in is the future the C5M Super Galaxy of which out here on the ramp today there are four actually not assigned to us yet but one of which is being used to fly around the local area with our crews aboard it it's a Travis Air Force Base C5M Ironically, of course, it was here at Westover at one time as a C-5B model. It's 840060, and it's back here as an M model from the 60th Airlift Wing, excuse me, the 60th Air Mobility Wing at Travis Air Force Base, California. The 60th is also joined by an associate unit there, the 349th Air Mobility Wing. So what we see today here is 69020 going off for her last flight to Tucson, Arizona, and we see, of course, the M models slowly taking over. And once June arrives, we should, according to what we're hearing from our maintenance friends and Lockheed Martin, we should be getting our first M model, Super Galaxy, to usher in yet another aviation milestone here at Westover. All right, and we understand that this is one of the last two original C5s that were here when they got here 30 years ago. Correct. And how many years have you worked on this one? I started working on this back in 2003 when we had it. 2003? Correct. And then when it went away and then I had my choice, I picked this one when it came back for the final crew chief of it. Now does this one have a, a nickname? I know 448 is called, they called it 448. Is this one called Good and Plenty 20 or anything? or? No. Just 20? Just 20. So it's uh, been a good performer though I understand. Yes. I had no, no issues launching this. And it figures the last day we were launching it, I have the first issue ever. Really? Yes. So we're having a bleed dock taut. So once we get that done, then hopefully it'll go. And are you going to go down there with them, or are you going to stay here? I'm going to stay here. And this is, uh, I understand, this is one of our crews taking it down there? Correct. So we had a crew go the first time to train the people down there to work on it, the ground handle it. So now, from now on, I don't think we're going to be sending maintenance with it. Is there anything else you wanted to mention about about this plane besides the fact that I know you're going to miss it, right? Correct. So I'm just getting ready because I'll get the first M model when it comes back. So, so you look at this as kind of a, a good change? Yeah, but it's sad to see this one go. So this is... So, so far I've seen all the A models go from here. It's kind of sad, but miss them. But those M models are coming pretty soon. Yes, I believe we should get our first one in June. Yeah, it's just a lot of history. They're exciting to fly. You never really know what's going to go on, you know. So, like today, we can't foresee anything, can't really plan for anything. You take it in stride? Yes, I do. I think part of being a C-5 crew member is when you're flying the biggest plane in the military, you have to have a big supply of patience, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You just sit here and, you know, if you have a good attitude, day's not going to be bad. Is there a... Any particular thoughts going to be running through your mind as you guys are flying this thing for the last time to Arizona? 
Um, I think what I'll be thinking about is just the history of what this plane went through, all the different places it's probably seen. And I'm just happy I get to be part of the last its last flight. Anything else you wanted to add about today's, uh, today's flight? No, I'm just, you know, a little humbled by the experience that we get to do this. So I'm going to enjoy the day and, you know, take care of it as best we can. assisting with this for, you know, a bit here and there. You gonna miss this plane? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> a you little know, bit. The, the A models have a lot more problems, so there's, like, good and bad, you know, there's familiarity, so yeah. just ex expect the unexpected, but I'm not gonna be too sad of it. You looking forward to the, the M models? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just excited for the new challenge and, you know, just learning how all the new operations yeah, it's supposed to be a lot more efficient, so we might have shorter uh, ground times or longer days, you know, when you're going on missions and stuff like that. Well, I saw one flying around yesterday. It sure is impressive to watch it lift up into the air and get up so quick. Yeah, for sure. The uh, thrust is a lot more powerful than these engines, so definitely makes sense for a, you know, faster flight. Uh, How long have you uh, worked on C5s? Um, about eight years now. Eight years? Yep. Uh, I've been in an art here for about six 